Hey guys, how's it going? This is uh, 1-2, Unit 1, Section 2, Levels of Organization. Might be how you want to title your notes today. So we spent the last time just talking about what does it mean to be alive. And so today what we're going to do is take a look at levels of organization of things that are alive. Now in biology, we can study pretty much anywhere from here to here. Um, but we're going to focus it on a couple of different levels. So like here, it, it, this little diagram shows you how, how to break it up. So if you like to study atoms and molecules of living things, then biochemistry, molecular biology, or genomics might be what you enjoy most of. Say you want to pursue this in college, there's where you would go. If you like to study organelles and cells, cell biology, physiology, and genetics would be where you'd want to go. If you like to study the tissues, organs, and organisms, anatomy, physiology, genetics, and taxonomy is where you'd want to study. And if you like to look at how populations of animals interact, communities, ecosystems, and the biosphere, then ecology is what you'd want to focus on. So as biologists, we study all of this, but we're going to break it down into little pieces for you, starting from the smallest, working our way all the way up to the biggest. All right. So. If we break down anything in the world, whether it's alive or your chair or the table that you're working at or the headphones that you're listening to this through, they're all made out of atoms. Atoms are, so here's a definition for you that you need to know, atoms are the basic unit of a chemical element made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now back in eighth grade, you should have had a basic understanding of the structure of an atom. If not, here's a picture kind of showing you. Here's the nucleus in the middle. The nucleus is made out of protons and neutrons. Uh, protons have a positive charge. Neutrons have no charge. And then around the outside, we have these guys, which are the electrons, and they have a negative charge. Now, there are 92 of them that show up naturally in the world. Um, there are plenty more that are man-made in laboratories, but for the most part, these are the ones that we could find somewhere in the atmosphere, in the rocks, in the water that make up our, our planet. So here's an atom. Now atoms by themselves, not very exciting, but when you start mixing them together with other things, other atoms to make compounds, that's when we start getting into a little bit better stuff. So atoms, basic unit of a chemical element. And when we put atoms together, we get molecules. Molecules are made out of elements, like hydrogen and oxygen. So for example, water, which we call H2O, is a molecule because there are two elements in here. There's hydrogen and oxygen, and there are three atoms in there. There's two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen, which makes a total of three. So here's a little color-coded diagram for you. Oxygen, hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, chlorine, fluoride. These are all things that can be found in the human body. And then these are just different compounds. NH2, C2, C3, Cn, CH. This stuff right here, that's ammonia. That's something that is highly toxic to humans and our kidneys are constantly trying to get out of our body so that way it doesn't kill us. Um, hydrogen cyanide, that will kill you. Thankfully our body doesn't make that. Uh, but this is just an example of compounds. So these are atoms in this top row, and then these guys right here would be molecules, otherwise known as compounds. So you can use compounds and molecules interchangeably with each other. Now if I put a whole bunch of molecules together, what do I get? I get organelles. Now this is, we could have spent a whole chapter on this one later. Organelles are little mini organs. I mean, the, the ending here, E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, means a mini version of. So these are mini organs. And you can kind of look at a cell as being like a, a human being. And the nucleus would be the brain. Um, you've got the stomach and digestive system in the mitochondria. Um, this is your waste system because it's dumping off waste. So the organelles basically keep a cell alive doing all the functions of life to a cell that our organs do for us. So that's where they get the name organelles from. 
So a specialized part of a cell that has a specific function, some examples, nucleus, ribosomes, chromosomes, etc. Um, you probably learned a little bit about this in seventh grade. We'll go in much more detail uh, about it later. Now, what if I put a whole bunch of organelles together? What do I get? I get a cell. And so a cell is the building block of life. So if I were to ask you what the individual unit of a human being is, we would say a cell. If we said what is the individual unit of water, well then it would be hydrogen or oxygen. So of living things, cells are the building block. I kind of think of them like Legos. Um, there's lots of different kinds of cells. There's lots of different kinds of Legos. There's the ones, the twos, the fours, the eights, the one deep, the two deep. You know what I'm talking about if you've ever played with Legos before. And I can take all those different kinds and put them together and make anything that I want to in the world. Well, if you take all these different cells that we see here and put them together in different arrangements, I can make every living thing on earth uh, out of those. These, by the way, are cheek cells. This is what you guys can find inside of your cheeks slushing around there. And this one right there, that is a plant cell. Um, I believe so. Maybe. No, I can't tell now. I'm just going off of the green, but I don't see any chloroplasts in there. So we got cells made up of all sorts of molecules building blocks of life. Now, what do you get when you put a whole bunch of cells together? You get tissues. So tissues are just um, parts of your body that are made out of cells. For example, muscle and bone are examples of tissues. Here's a picture showing all sorts of tissues. We have bone tissue, cartilage, which you can find in your nose and in your bouncy ears, adipose, which is fat tissue, neural tissue, which is brain, cardiac muscle, which is your heart, skin right there, uh, intestinal villi, that's uh, little fingers inside of your small intestine, You've got skeletal muscle, which are you know, biceps and such. So if I put a whole bunch of cells together, they all work together for a common purpose, and that makes a tissue. Now I can put these tissues together. Let me put some cartilage and bone together, and I can make an organ. And so organs are made out of tissues. They include things like eyeballs, hearts, brains, kidneys, stomachs, lungs, large intestine, teeth, um, uterus, placenta, and even a little baby right there. So uh, organs are just made out of a whole bunch of tissues thrown together. So like your eyeball, it's got muscular tissue, it's got um, uh, a fluid tissue inside, it's got the little blood vessels in there, so we've got tissues that are made out of arteries and veins. So we've got all these sorts of different organs. Now they also perform a function to help keep the organism alive, but they themselves, by themselves, can't do a whole lot. So let's put all these things together into one creature and let's call that, oh, nope, I lied. We put uh, like organs together. So organs that perform uh, similar functions, we call that an organ system. So these are organs that work together to perform a particular function, like your digestive system, which is right here. So notice it's made up of your mouth, your esophagus, your stomach, your small intestine, your large intestine, and even your liver is part of your digestive system as well as other systems too. So an organ system is just like organs that all kind of work together to perform the same job. Now if I put all those organ systems packed tight into one body, then I get the organism. And the organism is made up of organ systems which include the individual animal, plant, could also be a fungus, would be an organism. Um, let's see, what am I missing? A bacteria or bacterium, if we're talking about one. And there's one more kingdom of creatures. We've got plant kingdom, animal, fungus, bacteria, and, oh, there we go, uh, protists, little single-celled creatures. So any one of these five things can be an organism. In biology, we typically deal with plants and animals most often. Animals like this lovely guy right there. It's called a hyrax. I love this guy because look closely at his front teeth. He's got buck teeth. I think he's cute. Okay, so now I've got the individual animal or human or whatever. Well, what happens if I put a whole bunch of those guys together? I get a population. 
a population is made up of, of organisms of the same species, like a whole bunch of hyraxes, all living in the same place at the same time. So outside during fifth period in the Theatron, a population of seagulls comes down and picks up all your trash and eats all your leftover food. So that would be considered a population different from the seagulls that live down at the beach because they don't come up here and they don't go down there. So these are two different populations of the same organism. Now, if I put those populations together with other species, so the seagulls are fighting with the crows to eat the food. Well, now we have a community because we've got lots of different living things living in the same place at the same time. So we've got a community right there. It's hard to see, but there's like vultures and moose and plants. So all the living different types of species, whereas population is just the same kind of creature, communities has all the different types of creatures. Throw a community together, you get an ecosystem. An ecosystem includes the community, but this time now we have all the non-living stuff like the water, the temperature, the sun, the air quality, um, the uh, amount of nitrogen in the soil, all those types of things now make up an ecosystem. So I've taken all the living things and now I've thrown in all the non-living things. So we have lots of ecosystems like um, desert ecosystem, forest ecosystem, river ecosystem. So we've got tons of different kinds. Now, if I throw all the different ecosystems together, what do I get? I get what's called the biosphere, which is the whole of the earth that includes living things. So as high as the highest thing can go and as deep as the deepest thing can swim, everything in between. So you can imagine it's this area that encompasses around the earth and all that whole entire layer is considered the bio living sphere circle. So that's where the name comes from, biosphere or living circle that encompasses the earth. All right, let's see, I think, yeah, that's the last slide. So, um, so starting at the very smallest, you get atoms put together, get together to make molecules. Molecules get together to make organelles. Organel organelles get together to make cells. Cells make tissues. Tissues make organs. Organs make organ systems. Organ systems make organisms. Organisms make populations. Populations make communities. Communities uh, make ecosystems, and ecosystems make biospheres, okay? So if I give you a list of those, you should be able to rearrange them and put them in correct order from smallest to biggest, or vice versa, biggest down to smallest. So make sure you understand each one and how big or small it is compared to the next one. All right, guys, look forward to talking to you tomorrow. See you later.